today we are going to talk about sterilization, uh, the definition and the various techniques and briefly about each of them. Stressing more on hot air oven, autoclave and pasteurization. So sterilization is defined as a process by which an article, surface or medium is freed of all living microorganisms either in the vegetative state or the spore state. So what is a sterile product? It's a product free from living microorganisms. Now what, is, what do you mean by disinfection? Disinfection means the destruction or removal of all pathogenic organisms. Pathogenic organisms means organisms capable of giving rise to infection. So disinfection is the destruction or removal of all pathogenic organisms. Antisepsis. This means prevention of infection by inhibiting the growth of bacteria or microorganisms. Antiseptic means a substance that can be safely applied to skin or mucous membrane to prevent infection by inhibiting the growth of bacteria or microorganisms. Now bactericidal agent means a chemical agent that can kill bacteria. Bacteriostatic agent means a chemical agent that can, that can prevent the growth or multiplication of bacteria. Similarly, we have viricide, germicide, depending fungicide, sporicide, depending on the what it kills. Now the term decontamination, this means the process of rendering an article or area free of danger from contaminants like microbial, chemical, radioactive and other hazards. So the various methods of sterilization, we have physical methods and chemical methods. Physical methods include the traditional sunlight, even the act of drying which is now, I am not going to mention it in this class. Then we have dry heat sterilization and the various techniques under that. Moist heat sterilization and its subtypes. Sterilization by using radiation. Then filtration. Similarly, chemical methods include the various chemical agents that are used. Alcohols, aldehydes, dyes, halogens, phenols, surface active agents, metallic salts and finally the gaseous sterilization. So this is how it looks like. Sunlight drying, then you have the dry heat and moist heat. You have filtration techniques and then you have radiation. And chemical methods we will discuss in the last. So sunlight. So it has been known from time memorial that direct sunlight has bactericidal activity due to the combined effects of ultraviolet rays and heat rays. So sunlight plays an important role in spontaneous sterilization that occurs under natural conditions. Now dry heat sterilization. All microorganisms including bacterial spores can be destroyed by dry heat. The killing effect is due to protein denaturation and oxidative damage. Now here there is something known as thermal death time. It is a minimum time required to kill a group or a growth of microorganisms at a predetermined temperature in a specific environment. So the various methods of dry heat sterilization include flaming, incineration, hot air oven. Flaming is uh, basically inoculating loop or wire tip of forceps, spatulas is held in a Bunsen flame till it becomes red hot. This is known as flaming and that can kill, it is a form of dry heat sterilization. Second one is incineration, it is a good method for destroying contaminated clothes, animal dead bodies or carcasses and pathological materials. Now the third one, this is one of our important topics of the day, hot air oven. It is a most widely used method of sterilization by dry heat. So here there is a double wall chamber made of steel. Within the double wall, you have insulation material like glass fibers or asbestos. Similarly, there are two or three perforated shelves which are fixed within the oven on which you can place the material to be sterilized. 
electric fan is available inside to allow for circulation of hot air in the oven. A thermometer is fitted in the oven to note down the temperature inside the oven. So this is how the schematic diagram of a hot air oven looks like. Here the shelves are perforated as well. And the advantage is that it is used for sterilization of those substances which get spoiled during moist heat sterilization. Example, you have powders and oily materials. It is suitable for glass syringes. And the disadvantage is that it is not suitable for surgical dressings. It is not suitable for most of the medicaments, rubbers and plastic goods. So use, it is used mainly for sterilization of glassware, forceps, scissors, glass syringes, swabs. It is also used to sterilize pharmaceutical products like liquid paraffin, dusting powders, fats and grease. Now moist heat sterilization is more, now this uh, form of sterilization is more effective than dry heat sterilization. Steam has more penetration power than dry heat and it also has the th more thermal capacity than dry heat. It is very useful for killing bacterial spores and the various methods include pasteurization, boiling, steamer and then you have the autoclave. So pasteurization is basically at temperatures below 100 degrees, boiling is at temperature of 100 degrees, steamer is basically at temperature of 100 degrees at room at atmospheric pressure while autoclave is the same thing but at higher pressures. So the temperature also will be above 100. So pasteurization, this is another important topic. It's a partial sterilization technique which is used to make milk safe and also to improve its keeping properties. It kills only 97 to 99% of microorganisms, especially mycobacteria, brucellae and salmonella. But it does not kill bacterial spores. So there are two methods of doing pasteurization. You have the Holder method and the Flash method. The Holder method is where the milk is heated at 63 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes. While in flash process, you heat it at, at 72 degrees centigrade for just 15 to 20 seconds. And then it is cooled quickly to 13 degrees centigrade or below. This is known as pasteurization. Now, boiling is what we traditionally do in our uh, households. Here, you boil it uh, at, at 100 degrees centigrade. So, the vegetative bacteria are killed instantly at 90 to 100 degrees centigrade. But the sporing bacteria require prolonged periods of boring. Well, prolonged periods of boiling. So, boiling is not uh, traditionally recommended for sterilization of surgical instruments. So, when boiling, the material should be immersed in water and then boil for at least 10 to 30 minutes with the lid of the sterilizer closed. Now, the next is steamer. So, here the Koch or the Arnold steamer is used. So, free steam is used to ster sterilize culture media. So, steamer consists of a uh, tinned copper cabinet with a conical lid which allows the steam to vent out. Similarly, we have a perforated tray inside to place the material and usually it is above the water level. So a single exposure of 90 minutes will ensure sterilization. Now this same principle is used. This is a Koch steamer. You can see the conical lid, the perforated uh, tray or shelf and the water below it and the heating is seen below the steamer. Now, tindalization is a fractional sterilization method. It uses the same principle of a steamer. It is used for sterilization of culture media only, which contains sugars or gelatin. So here what they do is, there is an exposure of 100 degrees centigrade for 20 minutes on three successive days. So we have three uh, periods of sterilization. The first heating destroys the vegetative cells but not the bacterial spores. So in the gap between the first and second heating, the spores germinate into, vegetative, into the vegetative form and then the second heating kills them. Now the third heating is a safeguard against any spores which may not have germinated until the second interval. So like that we have two intervals between three heatings. It's known as tindalization. Now the autoclave, that's another important topic. It consists of a strong metallic chamber, usually made of stainless steel. It has a cover which has a steam vent, a pressure gauze and a safety valve. The electrically heated element is fitted at the bottom to heat the water to convert it into steam. 
water is poured into the chamber and again it is below it is above the perforated chamber perforated chamber in which you keep the materials the level of the water is adjusted in such a way that it does not touch the bottom of the perforated chamber so here there is sterilization by steam under pressure and this is done at temperatures between 108 to 147 degrees centigrade so the temperature is above 100 degrees centigrade so this is how a typical autoclave steamer looks like so the principle is that when water water boils when its vapor pressure equals that of surrounding atmosphere so when the pressure inside a closed vessel increases the temperature at which water boils also increases so when steam comes into contact with the cooler surface it condenses to water and gives the heat to that surface this process continues till the temperature of the surface is raised to that of steam so the working is that the autoclave is switched on to heat the water the vent is opened safety valve is set for the pressure when steam starts coming out it continues for five minutes then it is closed then the pressure begins to build it comes until it reaches the desired pressure with the corresponding temperature then from there onwards the holding period begins so once the period is over it is switched off and allowed to cool and all the steam inside the autoclave is removed the lid is opened and the sterilized material is taken out this is used to sterilize materials like dressings instruments laboratory wear media and pharmaceutical products the advantage it is more effective than dry heat the disadvantage is that it is unsuitable for sterilization of powders and oily products it cannot be used for sterilization of articles like plastics due to the high temperatures now sterilization by radiation so two types of radiations are used for sterilization we have the non ionizing radiations like the infrared rays and the ultraviolet rays and then you have the ionizing radiations like gamma X rays x rays non non ionizing radiation infrared radiation is used for rapid mass sterilization of prepacked items like syringes and catheters ultraviolet radiation is used for disinfecting enclosed areas like entryways operation theaters and laboratories now ionizing radiation so sterilization by ionizing radiation is also known as cold sterilization as the temperatures are usually kept low in such a case it does not cause a rise in temperature so the ionizing radiations are highly penetrative and lethal to dna gamma rays are produced from radio isotonic source such as cobalt 60 or cesium 137 this gamma radiation is used for sterilizing items like plastics syringes swabs catheters surgical dressings oils greases fabrics and metal foils now the last of the physical method physical methods include filtration filtration helps to remove the bacteria from heat labile liquids such as sera and solutions of sugars or antibiotics used for the preparation of culture media so common filters used include candle filters asbestos filters sintered glass filters sintered metal filters and membrane filters so candle filters uh, include the ceramic filters which are used for purification of water for industrial and drinking purposes it's also used in the common households asbestos filters like the seats fil filters they are disposable and single use this sintered glass filters are made from borosilicate glass sintered metal filters are made from stainless steel membrane filters are made of cellulose acetate or cellulose nitrate and they are also used in water purification as well as in sterilizing aqueous and oil solutions and also for the purpose of sterility testing so this is a candle filter or a ceramic filter this is an asbestos filter or a seeds filter it's a glass sintered glass filter metal glass filter and this is a membrane filter now chemical methods so several chemicals have been used as antiseptics and disinfectants the various modes of action include protein coagulation disruption of cell membrane and release of internal substances removal of free sulfhydryl groups needed for the functioning of enzymes then substrate competition so these are the various techniques different chemicals employ different modes of action 
So some of the chemicals include alcohol. So we have at, uh, ethyl alcohol and isopropyl alcohol. They're commonly used in skin antiseptics. Methyl alcohol is toxic and is but is effective against fungal spores and is used for treating cabinets and incubators. Now aldehydes, formaldehyde is bactericidal, sporicidal and is effective against viruses. It is used to preserve anatomical specimens, to sterilize clean metal instruments and for destroying anthrax spores in hair and wool. Similarly, you have glutaraldehyde. It is effective against tubercle bacilli, fungi and viruses. It is used to treat corrugated rubber tubes, face masks, endotracheal tubes, metal instruments and polythene tubings. So these are two, for, two aldehydes which are commonly used as, disinf uh, as sterilizing agents. Now dyes, enlene dyes and acridine dyes are used in, as skin and wound antiseptics. So the common enlene dyes are brilliant green, malachite green and crystal violet. They are active against gram positive organisms and are used as selective agents in culture media. Similarly, acridine dyes include proflavin, acriflavin, and euflavin. Next, we have halogens iodine in aqueous solution, iodine in alcoholic solution. They both are used as skin disinfectants. It is bactericidal and effective against spores, tubercle bacilli, and viruses. Chlorine and its compounds, especially hypochlorite, they are widely used as disinfectants. It is also bactericidal and effective against viruses. Phenols, these are obtained by distillation of coal tar. So they include phenol, lysol and chrysol. They are used as general disinfectants. Chlorhexidine is a non-toxic skin antiseptic. Now we have surface active agents. These are widely used as wetting agents or detergents or emulsifiers. There are four types. You have cationic non-ionic, anionic and amphoteric. Of these, the cationic agents are bactericidal. For example, they include cetablin or cetrimide and benz alconium chloride. Metallic salts, salts of silver, silver, salts of copper and salts of mercury are used as disinfectants. Copper salts are in particular also used as fungicides. Now we have the last, that is the gaseous sterilization. So this gaseous sterilization is done with a chemical in the gaseous state. So we have formaldehyde gas, which is used for sterilizing instruments and heat sensitive catheters and for fumigating wards, sick rooms, laboratories and operation theaters. ETO or ethylene oxide gas is used for sterilizing heart lung machines, respirators, sutures, syringes, needles and dental equipment and instruments. Beta proprio lactone or BPL. This is used for fumigation of operation theatres and aseptic rooms. So these are the various techniques of sterilization, physical and chemical. Thank you.